Um, and uh, it will be available on our website, latista.com, on our webinar section. And uh, it will also be on, available on our YouTube channel. So keep your eyes open. Uh, it should be there around this time tomorrow. Um, we also love your questions. We encourage uh, you to ask us stuff, ask Josh stuff. That's why we have him here. Um, so please, any questions you have, feel free to type them in the chat portion of the GoToWebinar panel on your computer. And um, we will uh, hold them there and then answer them towards the end of the webinar when we do our Q&A portion. So as we get started, um, I just wanted to uh, show you what we have going on today. Uh, John and Josh are going to do the majority of the presentation, but I wanted to kind of tee you up for what we're going to talk about. Uh, first, we're going to have a broad level overview of, of commissioning, just to make sure we're all on the same page as far as what commissioning is and uh, how we define it. And then uh, as we go into the webinar, we're going to dive a little more deeper into more complex complex commissioning environments, um, these different type of facilities and what they look like in these mission critical environments and how they're different from a traditional um, commissioning type of strategy. Um, obviously, the more complex the environment is, the more work that needs to be performed by personnel to make sure everything is operating up to speed and as the owner intended. That's when our industry expert, Josh, um, will come in and be able to touch on some of his experiences doing commissioning in the field and how uh, different technology solutions and process-oriented uh, strategies has transformed this unorganized, clunky manual commissioning process into more of a seamless, easy-to-manage easy strategy. So um, John and Josh are going to show us, uh, after that, John and Josh will, will take us through and show us how uh, commissioning works within Latista. Um, just a broad-level overview, and then towards the end of the webinar, we'll do a short recap and then open up the floor for questions. So if that sounds good to everyone, I'm going to kick it over to John, and we're going to get started. All right, perfect. Thank you, Alyssa. Uh, hello, everyone. What I'm going to be doing is uh, providing just a broad overview um, of a couple of things regarding commissioning, and then we're going to kick things over to Josh for the, the nitty-gritty piece um, that we're going to be talking about today. Now, the, the first question that comes up, and you know, you guys are all on the call here. We um, appreciate you joining in. You probably already have an idea of, of what commissioning is, but we just want to go over this with you again. Uh, you know, what we're really looking at here is it's a quality-focused process um, that centers on checking and verifying that all of your systems, you know, those subsystems, any associated equipment, uh, making sure that they work properly, and then also to ensure that the design and, you know, the overall project requirements are being met. You know, this, this is really a process that is not strictly limited to complex projects um, or new construction, right? Well, um, as we're seeing more and more, we're seeing a lot of work in and around the um, retro commissioning, recommissioning of uh, pre-existing facilities and projects that have already taken place um, in the past. Um, you know, a lot of people tend to think of, um, you know, commissioning as a process that only takes place at the end of construction and post turnover. Uh, but with commissioning, what we're really looking at um, is it needs to be utilized at the beginning of a project, you know, really in the design phase. Um, and all this is going to start with establishing a commissioning strategy at the outset. You know, and that strategy is really going to help you. And you can, um, you know, Josh is going to touch on this a little bit more later. Uh, but, you know, here are a few things that, um, you know, having a well thought out commissioning strategy will help you out with. You know, the benefits of having a complete strategy in place are not strictly limited to just those bullet points that you're seeing here. Um, you know, what stands out to me most overall is that the benefits of commissioning far, far outweigh the, you know, the associated cost of carrying out um, a well-planned commissioning process. You know, if we keep that end goal in mind, the end goal we spoke about before, um, we want to build our commissioning strategy around ensuring that all your requirements are met and, you know, that the owner is getting those things that they've paid for. And then as we move into more complex systems, you know, this process becomes far more important. Um, you know, when we're trying to get systems that um, we're trying to get up and running on a project become more complicated, you know, more intricate, uh, think of Michigan critical systems that require 99.99% uptime. 
you know, this is sort of the stuff that Josh deals with on a, on a daily basis and he's used to working with. You know, we need to uh, follow a process that ensures all the systems and their various components are meeting the specified operational needs of, our, um, of what we have laid out. Now, there's not a lot of room for error here. And, you know, essentially there really isn't any room for any error at all when we're talking about these mission critical systems. You know, in the end, what we want to accomplish through carrying out commissioning is to certify that the exact requirements are met for that specific project. And with that, what I'm going to do is kick it over to Josh, um, and he's going to take you through some of the, um, you know, the more mission critical piece that we discussed previously. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, John and Alyssa. Um, kind of brought on here, just wanted to go over some of the higher level commissioning processes everybody's familiar with. Uh, some of the challenges uh, that we face in the industry is uh, from not just the electrical subcontractor point of view, from but from the general uh, contractor point of view as well as the owner point of view is kind of boiling down the commissioning complex processes into a usable uh, project deliverables that can be handed over, and we can track, monitor, and document through the entire through the entire process. And kind of some of the things that we've used uh, in the past that I've worked with in setting up projects uh, for commissioning, particularly with Latista, is being able to get all the deliverables that the client is looking for and, and having a well thought out plan from the commissioning plan process down. So pretty much everybody uh, here is familiar with commissioning. We just wanted to kind of recap some of the things and capture all the processes that can be built into Latista from the very beginning. And we can go, we're going to go over some of the other uh, processes, some of the things that we actually need the deliverables for in order to build a project successfully at the start of the project. Um, but as you all know, the commissioning plan is the owners are going to be selecting the commission authority. We're going to be moving into uh, determining what type of plan we're looking in place, how much quality control, how much startup, and using the vendor's information, our uh, specifications, drawing submittals, and creating a plan and then following that plan. And really the purposes of these commissioning plans is, is really flush out all the details, eliminate and isolate issues that we have up front, think things through before we start doing all of our inspections, documentation, and startup. We want to make sure everybody has everything they need or we're not missing anything. And that's pretty critical is you could be at a later part of the project and then, oh, I don't have this portion of my inspections. But we want to avoid that. And Latista has a tool and many tools in place that we can do to make sure that effective communication is uh, going on. So everybody knows the commissioning plan. Uh, this really hashes out all the nitty gritty details with scheduling timelines, our mission critical uh, milestones that we need to meet. They describe our roles and responsibilities. They effectively explain the chain of command and lines of communication on who to report to. Uh, and then the other thing too is uh, we want to build into some of the safety protocols uh, during our testing process, our lockout tag out, and part of the uh, safety module in the Latista, you can build that module out in order to complement the commissioning. So all your lockout, tagout, one lines can actually be a portion of that inspections in your safety module. And that's part of the features that uh, Latista has. And then also the big thing with the commissioning plan is this describes the inspections, the scripts that we're going to use from level one all the way up to level five. And then obviously the important part of documentation and getting approval from the owner and all parties involved. And then we continue on. Some of the main big uh, process that we, we focus on commissioning is making sure that we actually, the building design intent is met. All the owner's operational requirements are going to be met. Uh, we ensure that the equipment and the systems are in accordance with the manufacturer's uh, specifications, recommendations. And then the Installing, you know, the installing contractors are going to be using the best practices and industry standards to make sure that we're doing that effectively, efficiently, at a, at a cost plus to the client. And then ultimately, documentation is so important to make sure that we have everything covered, everything has been fully inspected, and then the people that have actually done the inspections are the ones that are actually documenting it and uh, for approval. So that's that's the fundamentals of the system. Also, the the main goal really is the commissioning process is to get the final acceptance from the owner. So this is exactly what the owner bought, paid for. Everybody from the general contractor down to the commission authority to the subcontractors are in agreement 
that this is the package that we're turning over and everybody has gone through and vetted everything out and then ultimately want to transfer the project from the construction portion of it through the commissioning portion of it to the life cycle for the owner so that way they can have their project they can have the building and they're fully operational and all the commissioning process does is it thoroughly vets everything out documents everything so that way in the event that we need to go back and look at something there's records in place of test reports and then ultimately what we want to do is give the client you know the the, the tenant occupied space life safety systems are tested vetted out and you have a finished product that you can use for years to come some of the other objectives of the commissioning process here like we talked about documentation is so important that's why Latista has uh, smart checklist that we can use to actually document our process as we go along. Everything has been installed properly to the manufacturer's recommendations and verified that it's been documented that way. Uh, then we move into the training process. So after everything is uh, built, we go through the handoff to the actual facility operation side. Everybody's adequately trained. All the operation and uh, maintenance manuals are conveyed over to the actual owner. Some of the systems that we can be uh, documenting and, and doing the inspections in Latista are typical, your mechanical systems, your life safety systems, electrical systems, plumbing systems, and you can even use uh, for some of the architectural trades, the quality control module to build in that to supplement the commissioning process to have a thorough quality control program that's also available in Latista as, as the package goes. So now boiling it down into the typical traditional steps of commissioning, uh, what you can do actually from the owner's side is build in all your five steps of commissioning into Latista, the commissioning module. Some of the times, actually most of the time in my experience, it's been that there's competing systems, there's competing checklists, there's competing software systems where you have to use this for that portion of it and you have to, for level two, you use another software, for level three, you have this checklist, you have that spreadsheet, Kind of some of the nice things about Latista is you can roll in your factor witness testing. You can roll in your site equipment component verification level two uh, testing. You can roll in your pre-functional uh, testing and startup, and it's all in that one module, and, and we can kind of go into what that looks like and some of the processes of how to do that and what, what the prerequisites are to get that in there, as well as some of the contractual documents that we can build into the Latista. So that way you're, it's a one-stop shop. So you're at the factory, they've already they've assembled the equipment, uh, everybody's there to witness the testing and everything, the script gets completed and you can actually do that script right in Latisse to build that level one right in there. Then when it comes out, the equipment comes out on site on level two, you are, you're going through making sure there's no damage, there's nothing, you know, missing parts, everything is complete, everything matches the submittal. You can document level two there. It would just continue to go down the pre-functional checklist, my torque logs, my insulation resistance testing, and a completed insulation examination is all there. Uh, and then finally, and this is not utilized uh, that I've seen it much, but we can go ahead and do level four, all of our test scripts on level four actually into Latista and make sure all of our components are completely installed, everything is operating, all the sequence of operations are passed and fully performed. And then the owner, the commission authority, general contractor, subcontractor can all approve that. And if we have any deficiencies or defects at that time, you can document that into the commissioning module as an issue, track it that way, uh, photograph, documents, attachments, anything you need, and then that, those items can be corrected right away immediately before we do the integrated systems testing at the very end. And what the nice part about it is from level one to level five, uh, Latista is able to accommodate that and go in as far as detail as you'd like if you want to keep it general, if you want to go down to the nitty gritty specific. But it's not just for electrical equipment, it's not just for mechanical or plumbing equipment. It can be used for all trades and we can even tie in the commissioning process with the quality control and the safety like I said. So um, part of the thing that you can do also in Latista is all of our as-builts, uh, we can document all of our O&M manuals and if there's any modifications, all that can be added to the library and to the actual uh, uh, Latista module. So kind of the big thing is uh, everybody I know has their pet software, but I've used uh, several different softwares, built uh, several jobs now with Latista, and I tell you, it's a one-stop shop where you can have all your subcontractors.
contractors, your commissioning authority, uh, you can have your even your uh, Eaton reps, Square D, any of your vendors can actually go in there and do their uh, quality control and attach all their documentation in there, and it's a one-stop shop for your pieces of equipment. Um, and that's that's kind of the thing. Uh, some of the other big things that we wanted to just touch on is when you're going through the commissioning plan, usually what happens is it's late in the game. You already got stuff going on. Most of the time, submittals aren't even fully approved yet, and you have to determine what type of inspections and what type of testing to do. So what, what one of the things we're looking at doing is trying to talk to the owners about getting, you know, fully on board, getting the submittals turned around at a time period where you're on a, you're on site, everything has been approved, and you can already start vetting out your testing templates, and then you can already submit your quality control commissioning plan. And once that's done and approved, that's then when you get into the Latista building the project. And we'll go into that later, but that's kind of uh, general list of some of the overview I wanted to talk about today. Um, so we'll answer any questions at the end there. Great. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate that. So what we're going to be moving on to um, next, and you know, Josh already touched on this and did a great job of um, hitting on some of the key pieces that we like to focus on when it comes to um, commissioning with Latista, and you guys can see this list of information um, that we have available here, but there are a few key points that we wanted to hit on um, as we go through this, and, and Josh is going to uh, interject with his input um, as we go through each of these uh, next couple of slides here. Now, the first thing we're, that we're looking at um, in regards to how do we handle things and how do we make things much easier for um, you and for your people out in the field, the, the real, you know, one of the real easy things in the field is that we remove any sort of confusion um, around the process that needs to be carried out in the field. And, and what we're really doing um, with the application and, um, throughout um, your project uh, through your systems and the various components as part of those systems is laying out exactly um, what um, you know what levels need to be carried out what steps need to be carried out and then the associated um, documentation uh, that that's needed as part of that as well there's no no get involved. Um, everything gets set up as um, we go through the, uh, the configuration process. That way your people out in the field don't need to um, search through a, a, a binder. They don't need to go and print out a specific um, checklist that they have. They don't have to, um, you know, dig up and find the specific pieces of information that they need. It can all be provided to them, um, as I mentioned, on that system and then also on the individual um, basis as well. And I know this is a big feature that Josh um, really enjoys. Josh, you have another input um, for this? Yes, it's uh, it's, it's idiot-proof. And in commissioning, when we have different crews, sometimes it's multiple crews and different trades in a field trying to go through a pro, you know procedure or a checklist. And we can even, obviously, before uh, we start anything up, for example, we're going to be doing a lot of torquing and insulation resistance testing testing breakers, uh, testing bus, making bus out. And what it is is it, the screen before you, There's it's a color-coded system. So I've got pre-populated tests that each piece of equipment is going to have to go through. And if I'm out at that piece of equipment, it's easy enough to find uh, where I'm at. I select that. And this is on the Apple iPad app. Then we go to the first test, and you, you select that. And that's going to be on the screen here, factory test. That's our level one. That's already been completed, but our site received an inspection. So, for example, I just received some electrical equipment, and I want to do a thorough checkout. Now, in the days of the past, you're going to have you've seen a lot of paper binders, different you know applications, but there's a lot of time wasted in that. There's notorious paper lossage. Uh, you've got to go back and try to find a document in the field, and it's got somebody's car. The binder's incomplete. So in this application, you open your iPad, you go to the piece of equipment, and then I'm going to go to the site receiving inspection. I click on that, a PDF opens up, and I fill that inspection out. You sync it, you got the real-time data. Hey, I know John Doe got that uh, main switch gear in and everything checked out. We're good to go, no damage, no uh, parts are missing. And then at the end of the day, I can give a report to the superintendent, to the general contractor, to the commission authority. Hey, we've got everything on site. There's no damage so far, so good. And then we just roll into our inspections. So this is kind of one of the pre-start checklists. 
Uh, this is an example of what you can create and, and have your guys follow the same testing procedure on each type of equipment each time so there's no, uh, there's no differentiation between that, there's no nuances, everything is tested 100% and you can document that and see that the same way each time. And what that roadmap does for the individual inspector that's out there performing the inspection is they're going to know exactly what tests they're doing at what given time and everything is recorded, tracked, and automatically um, recorded so that way there's no there's no deviation. Okay, what time did uh, I torque this bolt? It was there's a history tab and you can go and see exactly who tested what, when, and how it was passed and everything like that. So if in the event that you had to go back and really see, you can go back and check out when did when was this approved? Or when was this passed? And if there was damage done to something after the fact, well, we received it and it was it was approved. Uh, and we have a photograph here saying that nothing was damaged. So there's no there's no uh, uh, pointing fingers off. We have a document, and it helps helps the uh, shipping companies out. It helps the subcontractors out. It helps everybody out to have real time reporting. It. And I know that um, it, it's just a lot more use of efficient time than than binderology and some of the other things with paper and other processes. But uh, it's really impressive, and it it's helped us and streamlined us uh, significantly. And to, to roll off of, of what Josh mentioned about um, what you're seeing here, you know, some of the feedback we received is, in a lot of cases, um, with some other uh, you know applications, people aren't used to seeing something new. So with one of the advantages to what you're seeing here is we can provide your people uh, in the field with the exact um, documentation that they are used to working with. Uh, you know, they, in a lot of cases, they've probably already gone through and filled out um, that specific checklist, you know, multiple times on their previous projects throughout their experience. And, and we want to provide, you know, that same sort of experience for them as they're going through uh, the process itself. And you can see that as an example here with this pre-start checklist. Um, as Josh mentioned. Now, another key piece I just want to point out uh, is that um, we can automate uh, the collection and, and entry of, of some of that data. Uh, so we do have the ability to pull in specific information um, onto your checklist about the pieces of equipment uh, or the systems that are being commissioned at that time. Uh, so you can see in this example, we have um, some, some population around the serial number, the model number, uh, and the tag number for this specific air handling unit. And those are the things that we can make easier for your people in the field, also reduce errors. Uh, that way people are just double checking uh, the information that is that is in that, that area on their checklist as opposed to writing it in themselves. And then also takes out the air around, uh, you, know, that, you know, people making mistakes with pencils, uh, you know, if, is that a, a zero or an O, things like that, that can come up as you're going through those, those specific processes. Now, uh, another thing um, that we're gonna, we want to point out, and um, you know, Josh is going to comment on this in a second, is uh, the, you know, the ability to utilize your model out in the field um, and to carry out the commissioning process from it. So a, as part of uh, you know, some of the things that we can do uh, is we can import your model and all of the equipment and, and systems that have been built as part of that process. And through there, um, you can view the model in the field, navigate it in 3D, select your specific pieces of equipment and your systems, uh, view them, and then carry out um, the, the specific levels that you need to, depending upon where you are um, in the process. It's a nice handy tool to have um, because people can see exactly what's supposed to be in front of them um, in 3D and then compare the two um, if needed. Hey Josh, you have any uh, input on this? Uh, the being able to have the visualization of BIM is I'm a very you know visual person and being able to see okay this ductwork goes here this pipe goes there my riser goes here and if there's a clash or something you upload the latest obviously uh, BIM 3D model and then when you're doing your quality control and commissioning you know part of the checklist is going to be is my equipment anchored properly well let me go and see what what's the dimension of this uh, concrete pad. Am, am I at the right spot? Can I verify it? Okay, before I set my piece of equipment down, is that concrete at the right area? So I'm not just going to say, okay, concrete guy, you put the pad there, this my equipment goes on top, but I can say, okay, something looks wrong here, and then you can kick it back up and, 
and do some quality control with that uh, BIM visualization. And I know, particularly with the mechanical trade, they rely on it heavily with all their piping riser diagrams and even electrical, make sure we're not clashing with anything. So it's an added tool that really is cost effective in the long run because your guys are installing everything properly and at the right location. And if, if the model needs to change, then you just go ahead and upload the, the most recent model. Uh, and then also that way the field can give as built red line information back to the CAD BIM model, uh, you know, the CAD and BIM department to make sure that everything that they're drawn is really how it is out in the field. And it does save a lot of time and finger pointing when you can identify uh, clashes in the field up front before you actually set that $100,000 piece of equipment and have to, you know, use the crane and, and crane it on and crane it off. So it's just thinking smartly. It's using tools and all the resources that we have in the Latista in order to make sure there's there's less errors, reduce waste, and that'll help our overall schedule and deliverables. And then our credibility with the client, being able to provide them the best possible uh, product. All right, and I'm gonna let Josh go on this next slide here. This is one of his favorite parts. Um, I know he likes to talk about it a lot. So uh, Josh, you wanna run them through what they're seeing here? Sure. <clears throat> so this goes back to our commissioning plan. We have all of our subcontractors. We have all, you know, the general contractor, commission authority, owner, buy-in. So this is when we set up the commissioning summary, and what it does is this will give us where we're at in that process for each piece of equipment. <clears throat> in order to actually make this, you've got to get a couple of things built ahead of time, and that's going to be our area tree, which is just a fancy word for room number, location, floors, how we want to see our <clears throat> room directory. And I know there's a lot of naming conventions and different room numbers, and that's important to get that built into Latista before you actually can get the ball rolling and doing your inspections. The other thing you're going to need to have on the left over there is going to be our item master. So each the item master is just a fancy word for a group of equipment. So we're going to group different types of equipment together, and then within that group of equipment, we're going to have what we call an inventory or just a piece of equipment. So when we're doing commission and, and we're looking at startup, I need to know exactly where we're at with all of our inspections, what's passed, what's not, where we're at. If we need to send a crew over here to finish this area, I can open my summary sheet, and each one of those cells is going to be a test. So if I click on that cell, it's going to pre-populate with that test inspection, and you're going to be able to know, okay, everything passed because it's green. So we see here... At the top, I know that those first two tests that we see, factor witness and site receiving inspection, is passed. Green, we're good to go. Then we move over to the pre-start inspection. I know it's at yellow, so it's in progress. And then we have the pre-functional startup test. I know that that's in progress. So right now, I know that I can't energize that piece of equipment because guess what? Not all the tests have been done. Not everything has been passed. So it's a visual representation you can use in a commissioning meeting to say, hey, where are we really at? Show me where you're at. And instead of just bringing in a bunch of binders or bringing in a bunch of PDFs and having to sort through an endless filter and, you know, a file directory on some type of a your computer and pull up each document, you can actually click on that document, see who inspected it, see if it's passed, and actually look at the history in that tab and say, okay, when did, when did John Doe really? He said he got that torch yesterday. Oh, he lied. He only got it done this morning at 9 o'clock. So you can actually go into the detail and see where we're at for each piece of equipment, what's ready to be energized, what's ready to be started up you know, mechanically. Then if I'm a mechanical contractor, you know how it goes, the electrician Sparky doesn't have it power to me. Well, let's see if Sparky's done with his stuff so that way I'm not impacting you know, my mechanical trades. So we can open up the electrical equipment and see where we're at. Vice versa, we can look and see how far along the mechanical contractor is at with their piece of equipment, see how much how much inspections and testing they've done. And that way we can, as an owner, as a GC, can see how far along we're doing. And the, the proof's in the pudding. It's a visualization tool. You can see it, and there's no BS in because if it's not green, it's not good. And, and I know that we, we love it. We can get our percent complete about how far along we are. And... Um, it's just a really good uh, tool to use. It's 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 really really critical. One of the nicest uh, features of Latista, in my opinion. Great, thank you, Josh. And and segueing off of that, you know, one of the things he mentioned was the ability to to view results um, from you know virtually anywhere anywhere with that internet connection. 
and, and this goes back to um, something Josh mentioned before where uh, the organizational piece, you don't have to dig through a binder. It, it may not be on a clipboard in someone's truck at, at home over the weekend. Um, with, you know, what we have set up here is you can quickly and easily view the results of any of your, your testing, any of your levels uh, for any system or piece of equipment, you know, essentially virtually from anywhere. And that's an example of what you're seeing here now. We can see the results of this pre-functional test um, for this specific air handling unit, in this case, um, you know, if, if I'm in the office, I'm, if I'm in the trailer, or if I'm in the field, or, you know, if I'm back at headquarters or if I'm over at the owners, I can always come back and take a look at this. And then also, this will be, uh, you know, set in, in time for me so that, you know, later on, say during the warranty period, uh, or what if, if, you know, maintenance comes up, uh, you know, long after that, this information is there and available for those people who need it in an on-demand type of fashion. Right. So um, the, ne the next piece we're looking at is um, one of the other pieces. Any of that data that you get into Latista, we do have a quick and easy way of, of getting that information out. And you know, what you're looking at here are, are two of the, uh, you know, visual aids that we can provide you with uh, that can be fully configured to meet your specific um, you know, reporting needs. And one of the things that we like to do, and um, I, I work specifically with Josh on this uh, quite a bit, is making sure that we have reporting for all of the different levels of, of people who are going to need access to this data. So making sure that, um, you know, our, the, the owner is informed, that all of our, our different contractors are informed, and then all of the different levels of people who are working within those organizations all need different types of data presented to them, uh, you know, for overall progress, their, their, their trends on um, you know, how much is being completed in a certain period of time, uh, you know, progress from system to system, and things like that. So we have a quick and easy way to, to um, you know, visualize the data that's being inputted as part of the process. Uh, Josh, you want to give them an idea of some of the things that we've got going on with uh, your project? Uh, sure. Uh, going back real quick on this, it's so important to actually know what's uh, at the beginning of the project, what type of test the, the trades are going to be doing in order to actually curtail the templates in order to capture this data so you can do a statistical analysis on it and see trending. So it depends on what the client wants to see because it's so important to capture that data historically from, the, from day one and it's a little bit harder to do that actually if you're you're into the project. So kind of some of the things that we wanted to see was we've got some milestones, a little bit quick schedule, and we wanted to make sure on our end that we were meeting those and we we're able going to be able to uh, show them, you know, the client that we were going to be on time. So what we looked at, and I was working with John and the Latista team um, did a great job for us, was 200% complete. So we could see by area, by turnover package to the client, how far along we are, uh, what our passing rate is, what our failure rate is going to be, and we can get a percent complete by area, by level of floor, or by level of, uh, you know, commissioning step. So we use it internally. It's one of the things that keeps us on track, and, and that way when we're sitting in meetings and someone wants to pull out the, uh, oh, we're on schedule, well, how do you know we're on schedule, show it to me we have some metrics that we can show them and it's documented and we can go back to the summary, we can go back to our, our metrics chart here and say, okay, statistically we're 55% done in this area, we've got turnover in two months, we're going to make it. I see 18% of my inspections are in progress, so we're doing pretty good. Conversely, if there's a problem or we're seeing a high failure rate, we're going to be able to go and analyze why in this area are we having so much failure rate. So we can go and drill down and figure out what the issues are. Maybe it's a bad manufacturer. Uh, maybe there was a bad shipper and they've damaged a lot of things. But, you know, without tracking percent complete, we're not going to know if we're going to make that schedule. And we can drill down to our issues and to our test templates to see, okay, what's the, what's the trend? Why are we failing at this? Um, and it's just one of the neat tools uh, to put together that can substantiate if we're going to make those milestones or not. Great. Thank you for that, Josh. All right. So you guys aren't off the hook yet, Josh and John. So <laughs> um, 
Uh, if you guys have questions, we have a bunch coming in. So um, again, if you weren't on at the beginning, type them in the, um, the chat on the GoToWebinar panel and I'll get to them in about a minute. But uh, just a recap, so what have we learned? Um, you know, we designed this webinar to uh, give you insight into really the, the heart and soul of the commissioning process. And with somebody like John and Josh, who's in the field, um, we can really illustrate to you how um, com commissioning in these more complex type of environments is a huge undertaking. You already know that. But it can be harnessed and it can be managed in a cohesive, organized way when you do it correctly and um, with the right solutions. Ultimately, delivering um, your end product with everything working properly and just how the, um, the owner intended. So. Um, that was the goal here. We hope uh, you guys got a lot out of it. Uh, just um, some information. If you're interested in learning more about Latista, for those of you who uh, maybe have never seen a demo, um, please go to our website. Uh, the URL is up here and um, fill out the form and we will be more than happy to walk you through our commissioning module or any of our other modules that you might be interested in. So now let's move on to the fun part and take some questions. So um, reminder, type your questions in. Um, I'm going to get started. So Josh, the first question we had was, um, it's for you. So if somebody was uh, asked if, if they were, were to go through with utilizing Latista on their next project, um, from, your, from a user perspective, what does it take to get things set up and working? Uh, that's a really good question. So it's all about planning. Uh, the commissioning plan needs to be drilled down, and everybody at the once we're breaking ground, the commissioning plan's got to be treated just as seriously as getting construction complete. So it takes issue for construction drawings, it takes issue for construction specifications, it takes approved submittals in order to create those quality control commissioning checklists and templates. And really. The, most of the time, the commissioning and quality control plans are just regurgitated from project to project. But really, with Latista, you can curtail and patent each project to the actual site-specific requirements. And, and really, it's, it's not that difficult to do that. But what you need to have is everything uh, released. Submittals have to be approved and backed in so that way you know exactly what your testing requirements are going to be. You can build your test templates. And really, you need to know that information so that way you can go into the commissioning module and have those testing templates there that we were talking about. And really, it's important to have everything well thought out and approved from the engineer, architect, owner, general contractor. Everybody is on board with, hey, this is what we're going to test. This is how we're going to test it. If there's any, any input, let's have it now so that way when we go build the project in Latista, we have all the information. And we're not going to have to do drastic deviations in the middle of construction or in the middle of the first phase of commissioning and change some stuff. Also, some of the big things to think about is to set up the commissioning, not just the commissioning, but the quality control portion. Because most of the general contractors, you know, you're dealing with the electrical, mechanical, and plumbing, they're going to be doing most of the commissioning here. But obviously, there's a lot of trades that are left out, and you can build in your quality control module by having also inspection templates and going through the specs section and going through the submittals and say, okay, we can create general templates and make sure my glazer is going to be installing this glass properly. My drywall guy has the right sheetrock. Um, it's rated for the right wall. We can do an, uh, a rough and wall rough and inspection and make sure that all trades are hit on that. So from a general, general contracting perspective, you want to have all the submittals in, in order to really build this thing properly. Also safety, you have people's safety plans in there, and you can build in safety inspections for your lifts. You can build in safety inspections for site walks. You can do your lock, lockout, tagout, um, master isolation log on here as well. Um, kind of some of the other things you're going to need is the area tree, which we talked about, is just a, the room breakout, how we want to break it out architecturally. We need to have a complete list of group of equipment type and that's going to be you have to populate your item master and then within that item master you're going to have to have a list of detailed equipment that you're going to want to track in commission and that's your inventory so all that information needs to be ahead of time also you'll need to get your vendors on board with all the purchasing specifications for your factory witness testing what they're looking for any type of special testing or load banking you want to do you can put all these type of tests 
and templates into uh, Latista. So those are, it's a whole kit and caboodle. Um, it's a lot of work up front, but if you plan it out and everything's good to go, you can actually have this thing running while you're doing your um, construction. And it probably takes, on my side, um, about a month to set up properly, but if you're the general contractor, you have a little more horsepower, you could probably set this thing up in four to six weeks, Start starting the clock when you get your submittals back. And that, that's the big thing. And, and to have kind of a revised uh, commissioning quality control plan detailed after you receive the, you know, like the invitation to bid plan, it's going to be boilerplate. You need to curtail it to the project. So those are the type of things you really need to have in place to do it right. All right, great. Um, okay, another question. Um, I, we can, uh, John, John, I think this one's for a good one for you. Um, so somebody said um, they're seeing more and more retro commissioning work come through lately. Um, is this, are, are we able, the Latista solution, we able to accommodate this type of work, retro commissioning? Yeah, definitely, um, and especially because the process uh, it is essentially the same, and Josh has been really talking about getting getting a, a the, the plan in place, right? So what we can do is take that retro commissioning plan that you have, that process, and then turn it into the process that you uh, essentially have been viewing in Latista here. So we can accommodate, uh, you know, commissioning for, for a building that has just been completed uh, and also, um, you know, take care of one that's been completed and, you know, with 30 years in the past if needed. We are seeing a lot more uh, retro commissioning in and around, um, you know, municipality and government facilities, uh, and, and they're realizing that the costs associated with making sure that everything is actually functioning properly and being efficient, um, you know, and especially around energy, uh, you know, that uh, the the benefit of going through a retro commissioning process. Um, is going to be benef beneficial to them. You know, the, the results um, may not be realized immediately, but over that time frame, uh, you know, whatever the standards they have in place, uh, you know, that, that's going to be a, a definite return on investment for them um, down the road. All right, great. So um, another question that came in, uh, I think, Josh, you've You'd be the best person for this one. So, uh, one of the attendees wants to know if um, you've had success using barcodes assigned to each piece of equipment. Yeah, barcodes, that was a recent feature added. Uh, we particularly, I've used it on another project, but the barcode is pretty, pretty good. You take a picture of it, it walks up there, and you can go through all the list of different equipment. So, it pulls it up, and you can do your inspections that way. Um, We've used other features, but the, the barcoding is kind of a good thing. And also one of the things I'd like to recommend is we have barcoding tags and everything like that. What we want to do is build that in the submittal process. So if I have an asset tag number, we want to be able to have that associated on that submittal. So there's no reason why when we're submitting equipment, we know what, what the vendor is going to be uh, supplying you know, a couple of years ahead. Let's get some of that owner-furnished equipment. Let's get some of that... Um, built into the submittal process so that way it's actually that barcode number is actually part of the submittal. That way someone in the you know in the actual office can be taking a picture of the barcode and creating the area tree and the item master with that barcode associated with that piece of equipment. And that could be done well before the time that the um, the equipment ever shows up on site. Great. Um, okay. All right. So another question. Some um, non-high, uh, uh, an attendee asked, said some non-high-tech jobs have general closeout specs when other high-tech jobs have functional checkout formats that we are to follow as general contractors. Can these types of uh, specifications be uploaded into Latista? Uh, yes, you can do that There's in the library tab. Uh, but one of the things you can do, too, is if we're just talking about say a non-high-tech non, non -high -tech job, but I mean every job is going more towards documentation of paperwork now. But you can build that summary, that step into the commissioning module for my owner closeout. So I can say I have my as you can You can actually make a checklist for, for each area for a uh, type of equipment. Yes, I have my as checked off. It's green. I can pass that. I have my O&M for that signed off. And, and so you can actually make a summary sheet for for 
pretty much anything you need to track as a deliverable to the client. And that can be a step in, in the process. So it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, detailed, but all that can be managed and tracked and then given a percent complete to kind of keep you on schedule to make sure I got to have all my O&Ms over and close out documents by the end of the month. Let's go in and see how much I've got back. And, and you can push on subs that way. You can push on vendors that way too. And, and you can have a, uh, you can export your percent complete. You can export your Excel file. You can export a PDF uh, and print that off and, and, and send it out and say, okay, we need this done. This is not done. And you can track it that way. So absolutely. And the piggyback off of what Josh said, the um, commissioning module is fully configurable. Uh, you may have heard me mention this before, but we, we want to match what your processes are, what whatever steps, checklists, levels that you need to have carried out on your specific job. You know, we have the ability to add into the, the product itself. That way, uh, you know, verbiage, um, you know, the, the types of... Um, Words that are used inside of there are recognizable by, by you and your team, and we're following the specific process that you need laid out for your specific project. So that configurability piece um, is, a, is a huge component that we, um, we like to talk about. Um, okay, we have another question for you, Josh. Um, so in the past with the other tools, uh, someone's, someone's telling us um, in the past with the other tools, they've used, um, as the systems have gotten more complicated, the overall commissioning process has become more difficult to manage. Um, could you give us some insight on what, sh what you um, and your team are doing to combat this? Sure. It's a, it's a process and tool technique. It's, it's both. Um, on, the, on the user end, uh, as, a, as a subcontractor, we're down the totem pole. Uh, but as far as, you know, an owner side or a general contractor side, there's much more flexibility in order to plan out, and planning is so very important, um, and, and plans need to be thorough. Our checklist has to have checklist, and then that checklist needs a checklist. So everything has got to be planned out ahead, and by doing that and spending that time up front, um, it, it just makes the machine work so much easier. For example, uh, when we get the commissioning plan back that's been vetted out by the commission authority or the uh, owner, what we want to do is we want to start putting bullet holes in there and, and trying to see if, if there's stuff missing. For example, if I don't have, if there's a section that doesn't talk about uh, torquing, or if there's a section that doesn't talk about what, what we need to do in order to actually uh, do our insulation resistance testing and what needs to be tested, what breakers need to be tested, and also sort, we need to be able to put that on paper and build that ticket back into the process. So we have to have a complete commissioning plan that everybody knows there's no holes in it. If we want something tested, now is the time to talk about it. So it's really about getting the subcontractors and the general contractors on board earlier with the client, with the owner, and having an open interaction with them and saying, okay, this is, this is what we need to look for. This is missing. That we can talk about what we need to do. Maybe this is a little bit too much you guys are wanting. And then we can also build in uh, into the actual Latista Scheduling, so we can put our schedule on there and know, put our you know our mission critical milestones in there, so that way I know what I need to have inspected by when, and I can actually set out uh, invites for inspections. So if we need to be looking at me and voltage switch gear, I know July 1st, you know I want to be able to have my inspection started, and we want to have everything completed so we can do our startup at the end of the week. So it's one of those things where it's going through all the headache up front. And then putting it in all the processes on paper into the you know the, the commission side of, of Latista before you need to use it, before it needs to be running and before you have to have users. And now the other thing too is um, very high level, sounds good, how do you make it happen in the field? Big thing is bringing in, setting up the project. It's gonna be about a month to six weeks to really do it justice. And then what you want to do is start training the people, the users that are going to be doing the inspections right away and, and not wait for two weeks before you need to have turnover. So that's the big thing is getting people in earlier, putting everything down on paper, and then having a thorough review as a group on what's missing, what's not there. And and you could use all the contract documents for that. And that that's really pie in the sky type of thing, but if it's done right and it's done up front, it's going to make everybody's life, including the owner, the general contractor, subs, and the commission authority, 
so much easier and you can actually plan out and meet schedule and not just have it on paper saying, hey, we've got to be done by this date, but we can actually work through that workflow process and make sure we reduce any waste that we don't need, any steps that are not value added, or for forgetting something, we can add that value added step in. That way we're tracking it. That way we're not two months into this thing and I've got to go back and reinvent the wheel. So that's that's my recommendation on that. Great. Thanks, Josh. We only have a, a few minutes left here. There are sort of two outstanding questions I wanted to get through before we wrap things up. Uh, someone asked a specific question around some of the, the colors that we saw on the reports uh, in, in one of the previous slides. Uh, to let you guys know, the colors are fully configurable piece as well. Uh, we can, you know, set up th those, um, those graphical displays to match um, specific color requests as needed. What you guys saw before, the colors didn't match up with the previous slide because that client had requested a, a specific color um, for that specific pie chart. And then the other question around um, checklist, someone asked um, if, if they're given a checklist by uh, um, an owner or, or um, someone else, can it be added into Latista? It certainly can. Um, what we can do is um, take that, that form uh, in, in whatever um, you know, digital format it is, um, do a little bit of work on it, uh, get it into Latista, um, and it will look and feel almost exactly like um, it does with, with the piece of paper that's in front of you. And the nice part about it is that we can make it smart, so we can take um, certain information and have it auto-populate on that form for you depending upon the system or piece of equipment that you're working on. Uh, we can also capture digital sign-offs and then also the nice part is outside of that checklist is you can also capture other documentation. So if there are photographs um, that you would like to take as part of that, that checklist, we can quickly and easily do that from within the application itself. Uh, you can gather your sign-offs, um, add supplemental data. So if there are owner's manuals, um, if there's a, a startup manual that needs to be included, whatever it may be, you can also include all of that supplemental data with that as well. So I think that does it for the questions. I'm going to turn it back over to Alyssa here. All right. Thanks, John. Uh, thank you, everybody, so much for attending and joining us for today's webinar. And a special thank you to Josh, um, our guest speaker from the field. Uh, he gave us great insight into um, his background in commissioning. And hopefully, everybody, uh, you all learned something today. And um, just uh, to mention again, we are recording um, the webinar, and it should be on the website on latisa.com um, probably tomorrow around this time. So uh, head back over there tomorrow and check it out. Thank you everyone so much for listening and we'll see you at the next webinar.